Hi there. I wanted to provide an introduction to another course which I'm offering alongside the standard econometrics course, which is all about the asymptotic behaviour of estimators. And this course is going to be really interesting because we're going to prove some of the theorems and results which we just take as given in the other course. So, for example, we're going to prove the central limit theorem, the weak law of large numbers, amongst other theorems. And in doing so, we are going to make use of some concepts and some mathematical tools which are slightly more advanced than that being used in the standard econometrics course. So we're going to use linear algebra, so we're going to make use of matrices. We're also going to make use of some statistical concepts which are slightly more advanced than that being used in the other course. So things like moment generating functions, characteristic functions, uh, inequality, so things like Chebyshev's inequality. But the idea is, even though this course is more advanced, if you can stick with this course and you can sort of see it through to the end, then you should understand some of the results and some of the concepts which are sort of stated within the other course just as given. So you'll have that much more of a better understanding as to how econometrics works. So what do we mean by the asymptotics of estimators? Well, we mean how do our estimators behave as our sample size tends to infinity? So what do we mean by behave? Well, remember before we talked about estimators as having some sort of sampling distribution. So the idea here is that if we had some sort of population and within that population there was a sort of true population parameter beta, which we were trying to estimate. But in general, we don't have the entirety of the population's data. We only have a sample from that population. So let's say we have a sample which we're going to call S1. If we use our estimator beta hat on S1, the idea is that this will output some estimate of the population parameter beta. So the idea is if we were to sort of take repeated samples from our population, sort of S1, S2, all the way through to Sn, where n is quite a big number, and we were to use beta hat on each of these different samples, then because of the sort of fact that each of these samples were slightly different, our, our estimator beta hat would output slightly different values for or slightly different estimates of the population parameter beta. If we were to tabulate the sort of frequency of each of these different estimators uh, or each of these different estimates which our estimator outputted, perhaps it would look something like this. Well, in asymptotics, we are speaking about how does this sort of frequency distribution behave as our sample size tends to infinity. So one thing we would quite like our um, estimator to do would be, well, as our sample size gets bigger and bigger, we would like our um, distribution to tend to being centered around the true population parameter. So even though, let's say this is our sort of sampling distribution for beta hat when uh, n is, let's say, 1,000, and we can see that this is actually a biased um, estimator beta hat in this circumstance because it's not centered around the true population parameter beta. As we've sort of increased the sample size, let's say to n equals 10,000, we can see that it's actually become centered over the true population parameter beta. So in this sense, we would say beta hat was a consistent estimator. So that's one sort of property of estimators we're going to study in the sort of, asympto in the sort of asymptotic behavior. Another property which we're going to study is, well, what does this exact distribution look like as n gets really, really large? And normally the solution here is that our distributions look something which is approximately normal as our sample size gets closer and closer to the population size. So that's what this course is all going to be about. It's going to be about how do our estimators behave as our sample size gets really, really big. And it's going to be really, really interesting because we're going to prove a lot of theorems which we just take as given in the other course. Anyway, I hope to see you in the rest of the videos.